The idea of long-term investing is now circling around long-term industry trends. We're talking now to James Butterfield from ETF Securities about this market, and ETFs in particular, with this idea of thematic investing. Uh, I understand that uh, there are two big areas that uh, are occupying um, your uh, clients' minds, and that's uh, the idea of robotics and, and cybersecurity. Let's take uh, robotics first of all. What is it about robotics that's, that's giving us uh, this, this kick? Robotics is a big trend and we've seen real investor appetite for it this year. Our assets under management have more than doubled this year. It's been very encouraging. But clients are starting to grasp the idea of the impact that robotics are, ha are having on the world. Say in somewhere like Japan where what we call robotics penetration, that is how many robots there are per 10,000 employees, it's, it's, it's quite a well-developed market in Japan. We see 1,400 robots per 10,000 employees. Whereas around the world, in the world average is only 44 robots per 10,000 employees. So robotics penetration in other markets is extremely low. Those, those uh, countries which have uh, large car manufacturing bases, such as Germany, uh, have, do have higher robotics penetration, but it's, it's, it's still pretty low. And particularly in places like China, where wages for employees are growing 17% year on year. It's becoming very challenging for employers. So they are starting to look, whether it's ethical or not, at, um, at having robots in, 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 instead of people. Uh, for instance, the iPhone, it's much better assembled by a robot than it, than, than it is a human and they can assemble them qu qu more quickly too. So there are real efficiency gains. In, in terms of the ETF space in, in, in this area, what are you noticing at the moment? How, how much exponential growth is there? Uh, it's, very, it's very difficult for us to tell. We've seen our assets under management rise from $14 million at the start of the year to $170 million. So it's slightly indicative of the appetite for, for, for robotics. But people are starting to grasp uh, for instance, if you look at uh, surgical procedures, in 2014 there were 2,000 uh, uh, surgical procedures and in 2015 there were 22,000 surgical procedures using robots. So it's becoming a, a big area. Uh, companies like John Deere who make tractors, they, uh, now 70 percent of their, the tractors they make now are fully automated. They don't have a human, a human is not driving the tractors. So there's some real growth areas. It's not just in, it's not just robots really either. It's in automated technology, automated technology in cars for instance. Is, so robotics, don't think of those humanoid type uh, 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 mechanical things. It's, it's, it's in lots of different areas. For instance, Microsoft Outlook. That is essentially a robot that uh, has replaced the, the typical secretary. We've seen uh, uh, secretarial work in the United States fall 70% since 1970. So clearly automation is affecting or invading the world in many different ways. And, and you're responding to this by issuing ETFs in this, in this space. So what sort of flows have you seen? So the flows we've seen this year are uh, we've seen $130 million of inflows year to date. Let's look, look at the second area, um, cyber security. Uh, I was talking there about the, the, the possibilities about growth in robotics, but I know cyber security is just, it's just enormous amount of growth in this particular area. What can you tell us about that in terms of its, uh, the context and, and, and where we are with this? We only have to look at the press, hear things like, uh, hear press articles about Yahoo and how they've been hacked or government hacking to do with Brexit, etc. It's becoming big news, but if you look at the underlying numbers, they're, they're quite scary. Uh, since 2009, we've seen a 66% annual growth in cybersecurity incidents. It's becoming a big problem for, uh, for corporates. The My Doom virus, a very well-known one, has cost the world $38 billion since it was created. And the world in, in 2014 spent 0.5% of world GDP on, uh, on uh, cyber security, fixing cyber security problems. That's $400 billion. It's becoming a very big market. And that's why we created the cyber security ETF. We, we, we want people to have the ability to, uh, uh, to, to monetize that, uh, that the, the, the growing trend in cyber security. So it's, it's, not, it's not just corporates, is it, of course, governments and countries and uh, you and I, individuals? Yeah, it, it pervades, uh, it's, it's not just the the financials whose online banking systems are getting hacked. It's, it's many, many businesses. This, if we look across the industry, that's a very interesting thing about cybersecurity. It's, it, whilst it is essentially you're investing in tech, that tech is being purchased by 
a whole a very wide range of of, uh, of industries. So what we find in terms of revenue streams is that it's, it's very stable and a lot less volatile than other tech companies. Um, one other area I want to talk about is, is, is the battery market. So we're hearing a lot about uh, the way in which Tesla, for example, is investing a lot in um, batteries that harness a lot of electric power. Um, they're still quite large, but nonetheless, as I know, it's a big area. Are you seeing any uptake in this? Is there much activity in the lithium space, for example? There is a lot of questions from clients about lithium. Is it a way of hedging against energy? In fact, it's not. Lithium is very energy intensive to extract and therefore it's quite closely correlated to the oil price. So if you're thinking of a way to hedge against the oil price because of the uptake of electric cars, actually lithium probably isn't the way to go. Uh, but we do see big trends in lithium demand, but it's complicated. Lithium, there are many, many different ore grades of lithium, which, which one do you invest in? And also the, future market, the futures market is very, very liquid at the moment. Elon Musk, for instance, uh, last year bought 51% of the world's lithium supply. So it's actually, for us, the structure to create an ETF is, is very challenging at the yeah. moment. Do you see that changing any time soon, or is that a situation that you don't see really moving much? Until the futures market becomes much more yeah. developed, we don't see it changing any time mm. soon. OK, but thematics is a big area. James, yes, thanks, indeed, uh, thanks indeed for joining us. Uh, James Butterfield there from ETF Securities talking about thematic investing in uh, robotics and cybersecurity, amongst other areas.